Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be taking a look at a truck that I am so happy is finally getting some attention from the modding community. Now, as we know, Jay Boosted does some of the highest quality truck tweaks in the game, and he has now messed with the Freightliner M916A1. This is the JBE edition. Now, it comes with a bunch of upgrades, but instead of, like, just blabbering them all off, I'm going to show them to you in the garage, and then we're going to take it for a drive. And I'm so happy, I'm so happy that he messed with the, messed with this truck, because I, I genuinely was really, like, upset when, this, when the game came out that this thing got kind of, you know, very, very, very little love in the base game. And it was kind of made a little ineffective, because... There wasn't much you could do with it, but now we can. And let's go ahead and take it into the garage and see what we can do. And boom. All right, so kicking us off, we have the, well, at least engines-wise, we have the SI 8V2300, the GB 8V2600 TTA, and the GB 8V2700 T. So that's going to be your, they're both going to give you an S+. Plus. This one is going to consume more fuel, though, and it's also going to be in an S+, plus, so I'm going to assume that it's going to give you more power. So we're going to go with that one. Now, we have two gearbox options, Special Off-Road and JBE Transmission, which is a custom work-in-progress transmission. And we're going to use that one because I feel like that would best show off the truck's abilities. And as far as suspensions go, we have JBE Stock. We have JBE Flex. And it also says, interestingly, it says, even though this is a flex suspension, you can tow or pull a trailer with it as well. So that's cool. JBE Raised, which is good for venturing down old roads or off-road terrain. And the JBE Active. So I'm going to go with JBE Raised, actually, because I feel like it'll be a pretty good in-between, like, mil middle ground. And as far as, oh my god, we have a, we have so many tire options. Like, I don't know if you all saw, but when we clicked on tires, the tire list just populated like crazy. So, we have a gigantic amount of highway tires ranging all the way up to, what, 54s? 54 inches in diameter on a highway tire. That is wild. But, I, you know, it could actually look pretty cool. And then we also have a full range of all-terrain tires. And as you can see, he's also adjusted the offset of the wheels a little bit in the front so they don't look super, like, like sucked into the fenders, which is nice. I think it definitely improves the look of the truck. So, I think also, too, I mean, if you wanted, like, kind of a realistic look, but still with a really big tire, this 54-inch ATM MD2 looks so good, and it looks really realistic. It looks, it's got that, like, beefy, off-road, you know, like, middle of nowhere backwoods hauling truck that I think really really like speaks to the kind of attitude you want out of this thing now we're into the off-road options and this is where it's going to get really really fun so already going through I'm seeing many familiar tire options that I really really like I'm really really digging the setup here and there's like there's so many there's so many oh my god oh those look really good the OHD 3s. Now, when you get into the mud tires, you have the 43-inch JBE Tega tires. You also have the Quasi Double Mud tires and the Quasi Monster Mud tires, which are shared between this mod and several other mods, as well as uh, t truck tweaks by J Boosted. So, as we scroll through... I'm actually really digging these. The 47-inch Quasi Double Mud Tires, those look real good. You have a full range of, of sizes in Tega Tires, but I know there are some people out there that love these and some people out there that absolutely hate these. So it's always kind of a toss-up as far as, like, you know, how people are going to feel about the Tega Tires. I love this setup. The 54-inch Quasi Double Mud Tires, those look awesome. Then, obviously, you have your chained options as well as your studded options in the quasi mud tires and the monster mud tires, which are the wide ones, the sort of steamroller tires. There you can see them in 51, and, like, seeing those in 51 just, it, it, it just looks so, so crazy. But you know what? Again, in terms of, like, middle of nowhere, you know, off-road heavy haul stuff, that would be an absolutely incredible setup. But what I'm actually going to do... As I'm going to go back to the mud tires, we're going to do the 54-inch quasi-double mud tires. I really, really like these. And especially, like, if you look at them closely, you can see the tread pattern on the inside tire is different than the tread pattern on the outside tire. I love the little details like that. It's so cool. 
So I'm also going to go with a Autonomous Winch and Spare Wheel, as well as Spare Wheel. And let's see, we've got actually quite the variety of snorkels. I'm going to go with this guy, the tall front facing. And then frame add-on wise, you can actually do the small sideboard bed, which is really cool. You use a small fuel carrier. Now, the only thing is, because of the fact that we have that, like, that weird utility add-on that kind of just sits there, we have not the best variety of frame add-ons and a lot of these like the flatbed for example the small sideboard they're only really going to carry one unit of cargo although you can do a roof rack which is really cool because that gives you some extra supplies personally what i would do with this thing is i would probably use it as a I would, if i was using it in a modded campaign scenario i would use it as a middle of nowhere last resort rescue truck and with that being said, the maintainer frame or the small fuel carrier would probably be your best option if you didn't want to use it to pull a trailer. However, I do want to test its towing abilities because that's another thing that I could see a lot of people using this for, especially if they were to use it when, like, after console mods come out, because I could definitely see stuff like this making its way to the consoles. So I'm going to see if we can do... Let's start with a saddle... Low, well, let's start with saddle high, actually. And then after that, no, no, actually, hold on, hold on, because we can adjust that later. I really think it looks cool with the maintainer box. I think it's like, it looks like this, you know, like, like I keep going back to that weird, you know, middle of nowhere rescue truck. But with that maintainer box, man, does it look good. So bumpers wise, I think I'm going to go with, eh, I actually like that. That actually kind of, like, it kind of fits. Even though it doesn't fit the fender line, it fits in the sense that, like, you would kind of automatically assume that something like this would just sort of be cobbled together out of, like, random pieces of whatever they found in the wilderness. But then again, then again, that looks really good. And so does that. That looks really good. You can actually do it in a normal configuration or a weighted configuration. You can also put LED fogs on the little light rack on the front which is also really cool let's see we do a muzzle exhaust heck yeah we do a muzzle exhaust oh i dig that now let's see colors wise i'm assuming we're gonna have a really big range of colors and not only are we gonna have a bit really big range as we do with all of j boosted's trucks but they're also all very bright and like the, the brightness is super high the contrast is super high and a lot of people I don't know. A lot of people have mixed opinions on that, but I personally really like it because I think it brings a little bit more character to the truck itself. But let's see what all we... Ooh, that looks so good. That looks so good. Oh, yes. We can throw beans on the dash as well. That's awesome. And then we will put... Let's see. We will put... What should we put up there anyway? Mm, I'm thinking... Let's put like a pine forest up there. And then take my winch, freedom bird, and no road, no prob, and take my winch, alt. So that's going to be, I mean, geez. Okay, no exterior customization. That's what I thought. That's going to do it for that first customization round. And boy, does this thing look ready. Like, literally, it looks so ready to take on absolutely everything that you might want to throw at it. Ain't that right, Beans? He's so far away. He's so far away. Now, in this configuration, what kind of trailers do we have access to? We have... Oh, it's got scout trailers. You could do... Okay, heavy scout. That's what this thing is, then. You could do a prototype exploration unit and do, like, a full-on heavy scout setup with this. I would be all about that. That would be so cool. And, of course, you could do your full range of, of pull-behinds and gooseneck trailers. So, I'm really loving loving this truck this breathes into this truck the life that it always needed to have you know this breathes that life into it not only does it breathe that life into it but it also allows fans of this truck myself included i love these older freightliners and i just wish that the game kind of gave them a bit more potential but this tr this truck tweak actually does give this thing the potential that frankly i believe it deserves because you're talking about a truck with diff lock always on and you know full variety of engine options custom tires custom suspensions active suspension and 
Obviously, if you wanted to make it like a little bit less capable, uh, if you wanted to make it a little bit closer to stock in-game balance, you could um, go with a lower suspension height or a smaller tire. But look at that! Look at that! It just like blazed its way right up that hill. It was like, get the heck out of my way. It, it's just like coming through. Don't even worry about it. It'll go everywhere. This thing will absolutely go everywhere. We'll go everywhere with beans in style. You never know. In that in that box on the back, it might also like have it might be delivering actual beans to an outpost somewhere. All right, let's see if we can go over that edge without nope. <laughs> Well, welcome to Turtleville. That was short-lived. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can flip this thing back over. We should be able to if we get the right winch point. Oh, wow. Actually, it's super easy to flip over. That's nice. That's really nice. I like the way it sounds, too. It's got a nice sound to it. And it looks so, like, menacing with the muzzle exhausts. Let's see how it does with this setup in the mud. In the shallow mud, this thing hauls. It does great. But look at that. Dude, oh my god. I love the way that thing looks, dude. I absolutely love the way that thing looks. Absolutely one of the most menacing trucks, like, in the game, period. Like, and I'm sure that there's people out there that may not agree with me or may think this truck is crap, but... <laughs> I mean, and that's fine. You know, like, you are completely 100% entitled to that opinion. Like, my opinion on this truck is my own. But at the same time, wow, this thing is legit. And look at that. Low plus just ripping on these 54s through the mud. Now, granted, low and low plus don't really have much speed difference when you get into the really deep stuff. But then again, that kind of keeps it a little bit more balanced. So I can, I can support that. God, that whoop just sent that barrel flying. All right, and now we have two more tests. We have the dips obstacle, and then we have, of course, the bridge jump, but we're gonna install the, oh God, whoa. I said we were gonna install the max engine, but I think we already have the max, well, no. Do we have the max engine? I don't remember if we have the max engine or not. Yes, we do, okay, yeah, we have the max engine. I was like, do we have the max engine, or are we just, or are we just silly? There have been many occasions in this game where I've been silly. It's not terrible through here. You do have to be careful, though, because if you kind of shove that, that front axle back, obviously you're going to cause a lot of damage, uh, either to the front suspension or the engine. So that damage zone seems to be particularly sensitive in this truck, but that's the way it was in the standard one too. So I don't think that really strays that far from the original setup or the original purpose of this vehicle. Now, one thing that makes me really excited about this thing is J Boosted's tweaks. I'm sure once console mods become a thing, you know, and once that, that update finally reaches the game, I am certain that his, that his tweaks should make it to console mods like it would be silly for them not to and not only that but like i feel like it would fit so well into the realm of what you know of what console mods have always been targeted towards yo this is like a little like turn in entry drift oh that's so cool that's so freaking cool i love that i absolutely love that all right y'all let's go all right, Beans, you ready? Bridge jump time! Let's go! Sixth gear, take it off! Sticking with it, that's flat out at sixth. Lima the jump! Boom, right on the barrels. It still drives. And actually, I thought we were gonna like obliterate the suspension. We only gave it like a little tiny bit of damage. But if you guys enjoyed this test of the JBE Freightliner, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions on this thing and on the video in the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And I'll see y'all later.